Welcome back. It's time to look at the headlines from the pages of the National Dailies of the Press, is what we call it, right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I'm glad to say we have joining us this morning Public Affairs Analyst uh, Ezekiel Ngaitok. Good morning to you, Mr. Ngaitok. Nice to have you on the program. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at uh, the... Uh, the stories on the pages of the front page, starting with uh, the Nigerian Tribune, um, with the banner headline, Adulterated Fuel being the kicker, NNPC files claims for damages against suppliers. Adulterated Fuel, NNPC files claims for damages against suppliers. And the following writers, queues will disappear by next week, carry. Queues will disappear by next week, Kerry. Give up Petroleum Ministry, PDP, tells Buhari. Give up Petroleum Ministry, PDP, tells Buhari. Details on page 8 um, of the tri Nigerian Tribune. I think it was only a matter of time before the PDP jumped on that one. FG wants peaceful resolution with ASU. Strike unfortunate minister. FG wants peaceful resolution with ASU. Strike unfortunate, says minister, as FEC OK's 1.71 trillion Naira contracts for transportation education ministries. 1.71 trillion Naira contracts for transportation education ministries. Um, the, <laughs> the universities are shut <laughs> as we speak. All right, God help us. Eight killed as gunmen attack cattle market in Abia. Attack on northerners in Abia. Enough is enough. Northern coalition warns. And uh, these are worrying things we hear um, from different parts of the country that are capable of um, triggering what we do not want to experience. Correctional service reps to probe utilization of 165 billion naira a budget free provision. And there's a picture of uh, Raul Faragbeshola, Minister of Interior. Um, one wonders whether this is a uh, not unconnected to his ongoing battle with uh, Bola Metinubu. But uh, the reps are said to probe the utilization of 165 billion naira budgetary provision. Interesting one. Let's move on. More stories from the Nigerian Tribune. Drug trafficking. Kiari Bawa confessed to working directly with a cartel in Brazil, Ethiopia, and the LEA. Exonerates agencies' officials. Promises blind justice for inductees. Still from the Nigerian Tribune, know what Emefiele told us on rumored presidential ambition, Committee of Friends. One minor, three commuters killed, two others injured in Plateau. Sad one there. Omotekun arrests truck with 63 northerners motorcycles in Ondo. Um, Solodo makes OND minimum qualification for political appointees as coming from a number of state stories on front page of the Nigerian Tribune. Over to the leadership newspaper with a big headline, NNPC apologizes to Nigerians over bad fuel, long queues, um, and the following writer says, we didn't see it coming. It shows scarcity will disappear soon. A PDP decries planned 201 billion naira for clearing adulterated petrol. Dangote Refinery, AFCTA, or ACFTA rather, will boost Nigeria's economic recovery, IMF. Um, it's important to note the NMPC had never said they will use 201 billion naira to, um, to, to, to repair the adulterated fee fuel. It was a study being done by a paper on what it will cost if the, um, the government decides to do that. Um, it must be pointed out. All right, more, pay, more stories, uh, headlines on the front page of the leadership newspaper. Finally, APC governors reach consensus, zone chairmanship to North Central. Um, this coming after the president uh, um, didn't meet with them and decided instead to um, get on a plane to an earlier scheduled uh, conference in Brussels, Belgium. Um, a Mayfield's record causing panic attack, friends tackle to smear uh, friends tackle smear campaign. It may feel his record causing panic attack. Friends tackle smear campaign. So they feel that um, all the talk on the newspapers of him um, being interested in running for the president's office is a, a smear campaign on, on his um, on his record on him. Gunmen, gunmen kill cattle traders injures scores in Abia Plateau. Uh, 15 
years after Senate probes Obasanjo's 400 billion naira PHC projects. Hmm. Kanu knows fate on terrorism charges April 8. And of course, yesterday he returned to court in the same Fendi outfit uh, with which on which he was arrested uh, and brought into Nigeria from Kenya. Father to be, uh, father to die by hanging for poisoning twin daughters. And we're surprised Asu embarked on strike FG. We're surprised Asu embarked on strike FG. Over to the Punch News report with the following headlines. The stations run out of petrol. Scarcity paralyzes states. Queues persist in Lagos, Abuja, others. Transport fares skyrocket. And small businesses grounded. Labor threatens strike. PDP flays silver. More from the Punch News report. Contributory pension assets rose by 1.1 trillion naira in 2021. Hit 13.42 trillion naira. Kiari may spend more days in detention as NDLEA approaches court. Asu fumes as federal government declares strike illegal. Asu fumes as federal government declares strike illegal. FG approves 1.17 trillion naira for railway maintenance NECO printing contracts. That's the National Examinations Council. FG approves 1.17 trillion naira for railway maintenance NECO printing contracts. Contracts. Bandits raid Kaduna community, abduct 22 residents. Uh, Northern youth kick as gunmen invade Abia cattle market, kill eight. Obasanjo Ango Abdullahi meet to strategize for 2023. Protesting Lagos driver set self ablaze by government, set ablaze by government agents, say family colleague. This is what the punch is saying. Protesting Lagos driver set ablaze by Lagos government agents. Uh, say family colleague. This is, of course, following the reports that he set himself ablaze in protest. And shooting a Regbe Shola loyalist attack Oshun CP. Command denies bias accusation. Yesterday, uh, the Oshun State Police Command had said that the shooting experience in parts of uh, Oshobo in Oshun State was done by uh, security attached to the convoy of uh, Ralph Regbe Shola. Um, and they've come out to deny that in accusing the Commissioner of Police of bias. All right, let's uh, move on finally to the Nation newspaper with the following headlines. The big one there, five petrol-laden vessels from Belgium, Belgium turned back. Five uh, petrol-laden uh, vessels from Belgium turned back. Well, the president is headed to Belgium. Uh, that's just uh, on the light note. NNPC, why we rejected consignment and scarcity spreads to more states. More headlines are from the Nation newspaper. Police and the LEA rift over Abba Kari deepens. Asu strike unnecessary, says federal government. In Gige, we paid 100 billion naira. And more from the Nation, the Oshun APC primary, and they have some details of that. Uh, what Arabe Shola has done is, in, is an abuse of government office. All right, uh, you can read more on the pages. Uh, of uh, that newspaper. We would now like to call in at this point. Um, our guest analyst, Ezekiel Nyeitok, uh, good morning to you. Mr. Nyeitok, I hope you are there and can hear me. Good morning and always a pleasure to be with you. All right, good fantastic, morning. fantastic. Um, uh, pictures uh, on the front page of the Nation newspaper, we can see uh, that story also going, uh, coming in other newspapers, um, Nigerians uh, on queue. Um, I saw a lot of people, hundreds of queues, cars on the streets uh, at about 5 a.m., 6 a.m. in Lagos on my way to work. And the situation is still persisting and biting nationwide. Finally, yesterday, the uh, NNPC GMD came out to say sorry to Nigerians. Um, but in that story, he still refused to take responsibility, um, saying it was totally unavoidable. So for now, no one is taking responsibility. Just a, a brief comment on the situation. Yeah, you know, we talked about it yesterday to some extent. Uh, and um, I just find it difficult to understand certain comments by people who are entrusted with responsibility. And the only explanation I can find to it is that this will feel they were being rewarded. And as a result, they owe no man no explanations except the person that um, rewarded them. The day that people start to see public office as a responsibility to the nation, they will not act the way they have been acting. Now, you are telling me 
as part of the um, you know bylines that you wrote that they didn't see this coming and i find it very very ridiculous because certain things are to be taken for granted one of such things is that anything can happen assuming you have a situation where a vessel is coming maybe it's on the way coming to bring your goods and for any reason there's a misunderstanding between neighboring countries adjoining countries and it makes it difficult for such a vessel to come in in which case it's not your fault it is absolutely nothing to do with you don't you foresee the situation of such a possibility and if that be the case what should be the reaction of a reasonable person i think that is why we have storage facilities you know backups you may call it that to make it easier to get and when you do not have that what was your thinking ab initio you didn't see it coming secondly you come to apologize to nigerians and i want to ask you how the apology is going to fix my 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 damaged vehicle and then you say you are going to um sue for damages for, for the company that uh, brought in the bad fuel and i'm asking myself again when you sue for damages how does that trickle down to the people who are the real beneficiaries of the damages so so many things it comes down to just one statement and that is we nigerians do not seem to pay premium on good governance we do not seem to understand the imperatives of having round pegs in square holes we do not seem to sit down and interrogate why we have become the poverty capital of the world what has happened in nnpc and the bad fuel is typical and uh, we cannot see it as an exception it is the rule in nigeria something goes wrong nobody is held liable how can you tell me that you know you know you you cannot be held liable there is an institution that we pay for with our hard end money and their job is to maintain certain standards on all products now petroleum is a prime product it's not just another product it's a prime product now the possibility of adulterated fuel is a very very clear possibility it has happened before when we had the toxic fuel and you are telling me that there is nothing set up to forestall this that's a height of insensitivity and irresponsibility and everybody is just walking free and looking good and because mr president the minister of petroleum is um, probably not available and it it is not okay it's not acceptable Interesting. Uh, uh, let's go straight over to the uh, Abakari um, NDLEA saga. Um, of course, the NDLEA has had to put out another press statement um, in response to the press statement by the Nigeria Police Force coming from the uh, force headquarters and the IGP, uh, earlier accusing the NDLEA of having officials who are also involved in the drug um, uh, business or in, the, in, the, um, in, in this particular scam. You know, and saying that they should also arrest uh, and prosecute their officials. And the NDA now coming over to say that they will not hide or protect any NDLA official who is um, <laughs> who is involved in all of this, uh, but that they won't want to be engaging in non-evidence-based uh, investigations, you know, and uh, also uh, maybe something like a smear campaign. So that's uh, indirectly taking a jab at the police because police didn't give us any evidence uh, to back up their claim that NDLA officials were were involved in all of this. Now that they name names, you know. So and what do you, what do you make of this back and forth? Because the punch of the nation is has this headline: Police NDLA rift over Abakari deepens. This uh, accusation and counter accusation uh, in the midst of all of this. Do we really know the role, the function, the responsibility of the Nigeria police? Do we really understand why they are set up in the first place and why they are paid by public funds? Do they know the part they play in national security, in the psyche of the citizens to be comfortable, that there will be rule of law and that there will be justice and equity? Are they aware that in the concept of justice and equity, it is only the police that will provide the evidence based on which the judiciary will make the pronouncement or the judgment? Does the police or do the police really understand their place in national development? 
that peace and stability and security are foundational to any development and that this key is in their hands, I find certain things preposterous. The reason is, how can the police say, ah, bros, no be only me or you serve you day? That, that is the height of insensitivity, of irresponsibility, of absurdity. Well, well in, in the police's so? defense, they said that they were they had already done a report on Abu Kari. They, they had already no, that, filed that, they had no, a report no, on that's him. Not, that's not the point I'm looking at. I'm looking at when the police says, you serve, you also they. they. It means they have evidence. And if they have the evidence, it means they've been hoarding the evidence. You cannot tell me that I did something, I'm also a culprit, when you do not have evidence. It means they had evidence and then they were hoarding the evidence like no party party kind of stuff. And then NDLA brought out their own and the police is now upset. It's like, look, I thought this was supposed to be a game between the two of us. You said, bros, don't let me talk. You said we are also there. Can this level of complicity come from the Nigeria police? If on the other hand, like NDLA says, Look, we don't have any evidence. If we have, bring. Can the police be so reckless, so irresponsible to make such a statement without evidence? And they are the custodians of evidence. These things have much larger implications than they think. We're starting to look at things, and I'm, I'm calling on Nigerians to wake up. These are our citizens that we pay them. They are our servants that are paid from our common patrimony. So they do not have this latitude and this latitude to go ahead and behave as if they are doing us favor and cannot sit up when the man on the seat cannot call them to order and defend the interests of the nation. I think Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, I call him the third time. He should know he took an oath of office to discharge a certain responsibility. It wasn't a favor that Nigerians did him. No, it wasn't. It was a responsibility that Nigerians vested him with. It's sad that we have a national assembly that is like, oh, guy, we can't touch your guy. We can't touch Baba, Baba, Baba. That guy is not Baba. That guy is a chief executive that is giving work to do. He's not a monarch. He's not a king. He is a CEO. And every CEO has certain global templates and what rules of engagement. Uh, we say, yeah, it's interesting. The president is, is not around for now, so maybe anything we'll have to wait till he comes back. <laughs> but um, the, 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 there are some conspiracy theories that um, have been flying around, and I'd just like to um, to uh, pose a, a couple of them, one or two of them, to you. Um, one is uh, from a uh, uh, lawyer. Let me pose one to you. A uh, lawyer, uh, Dele Farotimi, uh, who has been on, on Plus TV Africa you know, previously, um, quoting section... Three subsection three of the Nigerian Extradition Act that says that a, a fugitive criminal who has been charged with an offence under the law of Nigeria, or any part thereof, not being the offence for which his surrender is sought, who is serving a sentence or who is serving a sentence um, imposed in respect of any such offence uh, by a court in Nigeria, shall not be surrendered until such a time as he has been discharged, uh, whether by acquittal or on the expiration of his sentence or otherwise. So this um, theory that uh, all this is a, a conspiracy to prevent the extradition of uh, Abakari to the United States of America, where the FBI is waiting for him with open arms. Question number one, why can't we seize moments? It's so sad that we commit crimes in Nigeria. We behave like we don't understand anything about law and order. And we're looking for justice abroad. Why can't we seize moments? This is a moment where the Nigerian judiciary should liaise with the American system or the Interpol to get their evidence and nail this guy if he is guilty so that even the international community will start to applaud because what's happening is like, okay, they want to stop him. I understand that theory. It's, it's a very valid you know, theory, especially when you know how they work in Nigeria, which is this concept of... Um, Good cop, bad cop. Do you understand me? Two fighting, and they they, they 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 give this body language that they are fighting. Look at what's happening to our electoral law. 
you know, the president does not agree with the National Assembly. National Assembly says, no, 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 they don't agree. This is an absolute scam in my considered opinion. The two of them are together. They're working together. They don't want electronic transmission of results, in my opinion. So they are saying, put this one, remove that one. Let me tell you something. If Mr. President wants anything tonight, tonight, he will, from wherever in the world he is, send a message. The Attorney General will not sleep or rest. He will move into the house of the Senate President. The Speaker of the House will be together. In wherever they are, they will craft this. They will bring the experts they want. It's like Mr. President wanting a loan. It's like, look, I want something as I'm here in this country. Before I leave this country, I want to get the document to put. They will not sleep. By 12 midnight, letters, the, the document is on the desk of Mr. President. And he will get what he wants. And you are telling me that a clause has kept us for the past three months. No, add. No, don't add. Subtract. Don't subtract. And they do as if they are fighting. They're not fighting. They know what they're doing. They're together. The Nigerian is being scammed, in my opinion. They know what they're doing. It's the same thing as this, you know, Abakari's case. You know, I'm just looking at them. Do you know that? Follow the trend of events. Just before NDL year came up, the Nigerian police said, oh, we are going to dispose of that case in the next you know, in no time. Two weeks. Okay, within the uh, next few weeks. Mm. And immediately that happened. NDLA said, nope, there's a problem. And they came up with evidence where I tend to think that NDLA, I mean, I tend to believe that they mean well. The reason is that they could have just talked and talked for talk's sake without hard evidence and will leave it in the court of speculation. For them to have come out with the hard evidence, it shows that the lines have been drawn. Now look at the weakness in the response of the Nigerian police. The first is that, you know, we told you we are working on it, we are investigating, we have already done something. Excuse me, what have you done? Secondly, they say, hey, bros, look at it, don't be only me, you said, you all, your people also there. <laughs> Which is, which is an embarrassment. Without even okay? names. No names or name, nothing. No names, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Mm. Speculation. That's why at this point, if it's a battle, NTL has caught a technical knockout. I don't know how they're going to come back. Even if it's a battle between the two of them, bro, say, let this battle reign. They say, no, let me, I don't, I don't want to use a balance that, um, you know, let the wind blow. You understand me? Let me stop it at that. We can, we can, we can, <laughs> we, can we can add or complete it. <laughs> yes, yes. Make this wind blow. Mm. Make it blow well, well. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Thanks for, for leaving that. <laughs> okay. Um, the, the ASU strike is on. Um, the College of, Colleges of Education, um, academic staff union are also threatening to join the strike. Um, the federal government has spoken, even though President Buhari is not around, but um, the ministers are around to, to, to do their job. Um, the Minister of State for Labor and Productivity, or is it Labor and Employment these days, um, is saying that the ASU strike is unnecessary. Uh, uh, Senator Dr. Um, Chris Ngige, former governor, he says that ASU strike, the ASU strike, is unnecessary. Um, he says that they've paid 100 billion um, naira to the union or to the lecturers, or at least they've channeled that amount of money to address their issues. But I'd like to go over to... Um, the way a particular paper put it, uh, I think this should be uh, the Nigerian uh, Tribune, um, which says the uh, federal government wants peaceful resolution with ASU, uh, strike unfortunate, says minister, and of course can add um, unnecessary because of the way the nation is put it. And uh, they're going to have the following riders as FEC OKs, 1.71 trillion Naira contracts for transportation, Education Ministries. FEC OKs 1.71 trillion naira contracts for transportation education ministries. And it's interesting that the Nigerian Tribune put both stories together, one as the, the headline and then the other as the writer. Your thoughts on this, Mr. Yaito? Okay. Um, the concept of strike will continue. And it will continue until Nigerians wake up and ask of all the aspirants, of all the people 
who want to be our leaders or our president, what is the priority of each of them? And what is, should be our priority today? Education is key to any nation. And this is a statute of general application. How many people pay premium on education? You know, our current president, I find it, I, I find certain things, I can understand if he does not pay premium on education, but I can't understand that he does not pay premium on healthcare. I can't understand. So I expected that if a man like himself was coming to go for second term, or was going to go, I would have said a man who has had certain issues with his health is going to use a, a sledgehammer to kill a fly in that area. So I'm asking, who amongst all these people, the names that are being touted, you know, we've heard of Ashiwaju, we've heard of um, Kwan Kwaso, the Mogalus, you know, Wale Adewale, we've heard of all these people, you know, Chukuka. Which of them, or how many, how do we class them into their major areas of strength? And then how do we rate such a major areas of strength relative to current national challenges? Because we cannot solve all our problems in one day. Even if we had 100% of the resources, we will not be able to solve certain, you know, certain things are like, like, like education is foundational. You're going to have the nursery, we're going to have the primary, the secondary, you know, it, there are stages. And some of them will not take less than eight to 10 years to mat maturity. But what is the national vision? What is the national direction? Who is the best coach? You know, it's like a coach. You know, some countries, some, some clubs, let me come down to clubs. Some clubs have stars that you need to manage the stars. Some other clubs like Arsenal in those days would believe in, you know, kind of getting the raw talent, building them up, and even at this stage, selling and making money. So what is the mentality of each of the coaches? What is the game plan of each of these uh, people? Of recent, we had a lot of um, businessmen coming in uh, trying to say, okay, let us um, give Nigeria direction. And somebody said, Ezekiel, look very well. These are people that have either collected favors from Central Bank or are living off Central Bank. And as a result, they are not thinking of Nigeria. They are thinking of themselves. I don't know to what extent that is correct. Others are saying Nigerians have come to a point where they say enough is enough, like the Committee 22. And a thing like that should, should make me so happy. But let them leave the issue of, you know, giving the impression they are working for, for, for MFLA. Let them say we are coming to critique and profile the best CEO for Nigeria. We are going to call all the people that want to be president, put them on the mix, on the seat. We're going to drill them because we are the corporate Nigeria entity. We want to drill them the way that our sister Ngozi Okonjo Iweala was drilled for the WTO work. Once they do this, Nigerians will start to have a new ray of hope. I like what's going on now, and I, I want to believe that some of the things I'm seeing are fine because we need to move the conversation from APC, PDP, the big two. That is absolute balderdash. The parties don't rule. Today in Nigeria, APC is not in control. One man, Mr. Buhari, is in control. In my state, Akwaibom state, PDP is not in control. One man, Mr. Udomi Manuel, is in control. So we don't want to hear this party, party uh, uh, nonsense anymore. We want to talk in terms of who has the capacity, the competence, the capability, the courage, all the seas that you can imagine to steer the ship of state in this country away from this ignoble role of having become the poverty capital of the world to a, 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 a country that is actually an emerging you know, economy with all the resources that we have. That sort of body language, that sort of gesticulation is something that will inspire confidence in Nigeria. There's rumors that a man like Kwankwaso is leaving, you know, PDP. My prayer is that he really does leave. I, I'm looking at a situation where Mr. Abola Ahmed Tinubu is disenfranchised in APC. I pray he really leaves. I look for a situation where the concept of a possibility of a third force or an alternate force emerges. And I'm looking for the, this um, committee 22 coming to sit down and say all these people that want, you know, a kind of, you know, new paradigm, new discussion, new 
new body language of, look, we want to get a competent for hand for Nigeria. People who will rush to start, you know, registering anyhow, you know, to vote. And it will start to inspire confidence. Don't make it look like you are working for one person. By the time that Kwankwaso leaves APC, uh, PDP, and possibly Ashuaju possibly leaves APC, and then these younger people start to come up, and then the Committee 22 set up a profiling template, I think that 2023 might become a saving grace for Nigeria and a turning point for the positive. We, we, we certainly hope so. You know, prophecies have been given, you know, as to who should be the next president. The last one I remember hearing was that um, a, a young Nigerian will be the one to emerge. Time will tell. <laughs> Time will tell. Um, you, know, you, know my name, you know my name is Ezekiel, and that's a prophet. And my prophecy is that there is going to be a new dimension where we are able to crit critique, profile, and get a competent president. Whether it is young or is old, that's not my problem. Whether it's from the north or from the south is none of my issues. I just want a man that will hit the road running and save Nigeria. Or wow. a woman. Wow, in, in, or a woman. Interesting you put that there. <laughs> Very important these days. Um, uh, uh, I think we'll be adding prophet to your name next time, you know, you call <laughs> as a title. So my, <laughs> past, my pastor calls me prof. He um, says he doesn't know whether it is prophet or professor. He just well, leave it a prof. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. So, um, interesting analysis from you, which had more time to go into other papers. But it's been interesting. Uh, prof Ezekiel I took as Peter Guest is a public affairs analyst. Thank you Don't so, so very much. So that is his exclusive title. <laughs> my word, my word. Uh, you're taking us down memory lane. Thank you very much, so very much for your time, sir, this morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. And that's uh, off the press for now. We will take a break now. And of course, look at what's happening, or ha happened today rather, in history, being the 17th day in the month of February 2022. We'll be right back on the other side with more on The Breakfast.